About a decade ago, um, uh, I got a phone call. I was standing on my back patio and I was grilling on my big green egg. And we had had some conversation because I had noticed um, on a couple of different occasions that David's behavior just seemed a little off to me. And I was a little worried. I was like, hey, like, you know, like, do you notice anything? And she's sort of like, I don't know. Like I, if something's going on, I just pray, you know, come to light. And, and, I, and I said, um, so th this was some of our conversation. She calls me and she says, hey, I need your help. And I said, what's going on? She said, well, David's on his way home and there's something going on and, and um, I, I just need your help confronting him. You know, we need to sort of have a, a, an intervention of sorts. And I was like, oh, really? She's like, yeah, and I, I just, I can't do it by myself. Would you, would you come? I, I, wanna, I wanna do this, but I, I just, I need your support and I know David respects you. And so <laughs> she had lots of questions and the questions kept coming and kept coming and that led to questions for me. And as we learned more, there was more questions and more questions and more questions. And um, David and I had breakfast this week and <laughs> over breakfast, he said, that was the longest three hours of my entire life. Uh, we sat there and we talked and we talked and we talked and finally near the end of the conversation, David said, okay, okay, I, I can't, I can't deny it anymore. Like several months ago, I, um, I was dealing with a lot of stress at work and so I went and saw a psychiatrist and just said, hey, I need something to help me um, deal with all the stress I've got at work and I just, I, I don't know how to manage it. And so, and eventually these things started to get their hooks in him. So much so that he didn't know how to get out of it and he didn't know how to function outside of that. And, and he told us that. And so, and, and I was so grateful. I was like, hey, I, we, can, we can figure this out together. Like this, this happens. These things happen in life. I told him, I said, tomorrow morning, we're gonna go, we're gonna see this guy. And so the next morning I go pick him up and we go see a therapist at a, a place that I greatly respect over in Ackworth uh, called Hope Quest. And we get to Hope Quest and, and we sit down and as we talked, that guy had lots of questions as well. And he asked question after question. We realized like, hey, this, this thing had a bigger grip on David than he or I or even Holly really realized. And so he recommended, was sort of shocked to, to me. He, he recommended that Dave, David join their 90-day residential program. So it's a 90-day inpatient program, which was like, you know, as, imagine, as you can imagine, it's terrifying. What do you do about job and work and family? Like, there's no way. And so... Finally, David said, well, you know what? If that's what I need to do, um, you know, I'm gonna do it. So we drove from Ackworth all the way back over here. Holly and uh, their girls were at our house and uh, we, they had brought him some stuff and he was gonna say goodbye. It was a terrible moment um, as we said goodbye to the girls and we headed back um, over to Ackworth and <laughs> we both needed a drink. We stopped at Starbucks, so don't, don't worry, but we, we, we need... <laughs> We needed a drink at that point. Um, and um, the next morning, I wake up and I was headed to the church. I was leading staff meeting the next morning and I get a call from the director of the program. He's like, you gotta come get David. And I was like, why, what happened? And he's like, well, he needs to go through medical detox. I told you we don't do that. And, and like David apparently you know, didn't, wasn't forthright about what he had, he had taken. And um, he, he really needs, he probably needs you to take him to the ER and then eventually you know, to, a, to a medical detox facility. So. I told Holly, I was like, I'll go take care of her. She's like, oh no, no, I'm gonna take responsibility. And so Holly and I and a friend of hers, uh, the three of us jump in a car together and we drive over to, uh, to, to Ackworth. We take him to Kennestone Hospital and we're in this section at Kennestone Hospital in the ER. We helped us get David into a great detox program and eventually David um, decided he was gonna wake up to what was going on. And, and he would say, he told me this week that... Um, that if it wasn't for Holly, he didn't know where he would be. That Holly had decided that she wasn't gonna close her eyes to what was going on anymore. She wasn't gonna deny it anymore. And she was gonna lead their family to figure out how to turn things around even when he couldn't. And um, together they did a lot of hard work. And um, here's the thing, if they didn't, I couldn't show you this picture right here. You know, I, I'm not sure where David would be. I don't know where their marriage would be. They would tell you the same thing. And um, one of the things you don't know as you look at this beautiful family that looks like a normal family because normal people go through these things. But what you don't know is this little guy right here, he wouldn't even be here if they hadn't woken up to the truth. David and Holly, they would tell you that this little guy got the best of both of them and didn't really get the worst of them. And, 
And um, their whole family is so thrilled to have them as part of their family. Here's why I tell you that story is because um, I know the first step is scary, regardless of what you're in, whether it's something really that's a mess and difficult or whether you're just at the beginning of it, you're heading that direction. It's scary to, to sort of open up and wake up and look up and own up to what's going on. But anybody and everybody who's ever gone through that and took, taken that step of obedience to tell you the same thing, it's totally worth it. You can't possibly imagine the beautiful things that God has for you on the other side of waking up to what's really going on. It's the first step to turning things around. And I just want you to know, if you were to talk to David and Holly, they would tell you they're so grateful for God's grace, for the people in their life, for their church that came around that that helped them wake up to face and walk through what's going on. Waking up and opening your eyes, facing the truth, coming out of hiding. It is the first step because it's a complete abandonment of the previous pattern. It's truly turning things around and heading a new direction. And and whether you're dealing with this in a corporate setting or a personal setting or relational setting, it's always the same. You got to figure out what's really going on and what are you doing to contribute it, to contribute to that. Anyone who's ever turned around anything, that's the way they've done it. And they'll tell you it's totally worth doing. I would just say there's probably a step for all of us to take, however big or small. But I want you to know that I too am gonna pray for the next seven days that any of you, any of you listening online, any of our churches, that if there's something that's going in the wrong direction in your life, that God would use something. He would use somebody. Maybe he would use today to wake you up to what's really going on so he can begin that turnaround in your life. Let me pray for you. God, I pray today um, for somebody who is in the midst of this storm or maybe somebody who's headed towards the storm and maybe they do have somebody in their life that they could talk to, or, but maybe they're scared. Maybe they're afraid or maybe, maybe they're dismissing at this point. They're closing their eyes to, they're denying, they're going, it's not that, not that big a deal. God, I just prayed today that you would help them maybe to just have a few seconds of insane courage to text us or to text a friend or to walk out of here and make a phone call or to talk to the person they came with to just say, hey, I don't know what this looks like yet, but I need to wake up to something that's going on right around me. Things are not going well in my marriage or things are not going, they're not going in the right direction in my career. Things are not going in the right direction in my personal life or my emotional life. I need some help. I I, I need to tell somebody about what's been going on because I need to turn things around. God, I just pray that you would affirm in them right now that that you're with them, that you'll guide them in the same way that you eventually would rescue Jonah, in the same way that you rescued the sailors in the ship, in the same way that you rescued David and Holly. We all are in need of your rescue at different times in our lives. And I just pray that they would know today They would know that they they would know that they would know that you're a God who rescues and that they can put their trust in you. And I pray it in Jesus' name, amen.